Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. Thanks for drawing with me. I know that ink is kind of tough. Uh, I know that there's a lot of fears and phobias about it. Hopefully we're breaking through those. Hopefully by the time we're all done that you'll enjoy this. First of all, with my number two pencil, I'm just going to make a little mark up here at the top and say that's where I want the top of her head to go. I want to leave myself a little bit of space up there. Not a lot, but a little bit. We're going to start kind of uh, simple shapes. So start out with her head, this egg shape, and uh, we're about, what, a third of the way down through our page. You can kind of come down and make a little, little spot for her chin, and then just say, okay, that's where I want her head, kind of an egg shape. Leave yourself plenty of space for pigtails, which are, I'm just going to do this little circle there. There's one right there. And one over on the other side. And they're about the same size, give or take. One might be slightly larger than the other. Her shoulders, if you come down just a little bit, and you, you can do kind of this little square for her body. There's her shoulders. And you probably have noticed that I'm offset just a little bit. Anytime you put something smack dab in the middle of the page, it tends to be a little... Uh, predictable, a little, um, for lack of a better way to say it, boring, a little on the trite side, and you want to relate your object to the edge of your paper. So what I've done is I've moved her over to the left just a little bit and left myself just a little bit of room here, but more room over on the right side. Her hand, you just want to block that in. Look at the shape of the hand. And just block that in with a simple shape. The arm is a obelisk. Or I don't know what you call that. Is that an isosceles triangle? And then her other arm, if you look where her hand is, right under her elbow there, just do a little arch. There's the other arm. These two elbows should be about level. And everything else, really, we could fudge in. If you want to draw in some of those smaller details, you, you could. But the important things are the hands and faces. I'm just going to go into my picture. I'm going to remove all the color. And see if that helps us a little bit. Sometimes that helps because then you see the darks and the lights a little easier. Remember when we're drawing faces that your eyes are about in the middle of your head. So if I took my pencil and kind of went down and figured out where her eyes are, I could put a little mark there and just say, there's an eye here, there's an eye there. Remember, there's one eye distance in between the eyes. So if you look at your eyes, you can say, well, that's about right. And then if you divide the space between the bottom of her eye and her chin in half, that's about where her upper lip goes, that little uh, philtrum. And then you've got a little bit of a nose. And you could just use that, use your pencil to just do a little triangle shadow there for the nose. And then you come down from the center of the eye straight down, make a little mark, center of the eye straight down, make a little mark. That's about where the corner of the mouth goes. And then the bottom lip is just a little line to represent that shadow under the lip.
And if you want to just block in where the hair goes, you can do that too. The rest of it, we can take care of. Piece of cake. Right below her chin is where that knuckle is. So if you wanted to put in a little knuckle just to represent that finger. I don't know if you've drawn hands very much. Uh, you, you probably ought to, just, just to practice. But you can think of your hands like little sausages. The fingertips curve up. So if you look at your fingertips... I mean, you've got this little fingertip here, and it, it kind of curves up. Mine doesn't because it, I'm ruined that finger so many times. But and especially female fingers. Female fingers tend to be a little more pointy than the male fingers do. So if you think of them like little sausages... And I'm just blocking them in. If if this isn't quite right, that's okay. I can adjust this later. The other hand, I can hardly see it, so I may just leave that one out and just wait and do it in the end. You could block in knuckles if you wanted to, but the fingers, hard to see. You might just leave those out. Plus, they're foreshortened. Foreshortened means that they kind of go away from you. But the hair... You don't need to really figure out where the hair's going uh, because as soon as this picture was taken, she flipped her head and it kind of changed a little bit anyway, so no big deal. You ready for ink? We're going to zoom into this. Um, she's got some beautiful eyes, and I'm going to show you easy techniques of doing ink eyes. I'm going to start with the upper eyelid. I'm just going to do this little arch. Upper eyelid, right there. And she's got uh, um, an eyelid that kind of fits into her eye. So right above that, you can do little dots and dashes, maybe a little edge. And that represents the eyelid as it fits into the eye. We'll do some eyelashes and stuff later on. Don't worry about the bottom eyelid. The bottom eyelid is very, very light. And so if you if you had to, you could put in a little corner right there. Just a little corner. Little dots and dashes maybe. And maybe right there by the tear duct. A couple little dots and dashes. But the rest of it we're just going to leave out. Now the, the iris part are just little brackets and you see the whole bottom part of the iris. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some little dots and dashes along the iris. And as it comes down, I'm going to just kind of stop, maybe put a little dot on the bottom, and then go towards the top. Now if you notice her pupil, there's a little highlight over the pupil. So I'm just going to go in there and do this little half moon shape. It almost touches the top of the eyelid. Not quite. Just a little half moon shape. I used to call it a Pac-Man shape, but my students stopped knowing who Pac-Man was. You not know who Pac-Man is? Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. And then, because her eyes are kind of dark, I'm going to do these little um, starbursty kind of lines. I'm going to start with the pupil, from the inside of the pupil, and just do little lines out to the edge of the iris. I do less line at the bottom, more line at the top. 
And you can even augment that with some little dots and dashes. That's going to let make that eye look very realistic. That little bit of reflected light on the bottom there. It's kind of nice. The other thing I know is that her eye is not white. If you notice, the left part of her eye is in shadow. So you can either hatch through that or you can do little dots. It's up to you. I'm going to hatch. I'm just going to do very quick little hatches, about three lines. There you go. That's it. And all that did was just to darken that little bit of shape. A couple of dots would work. I'm going to do the same thing with the other eye, and then we'll do the bridge of the nose. Um, and if you want to, while you're here, you can do eyebrows. Um, those little feathered lines that I taught you last time with our moose, uh, in the direction that the eyebrows flow. So I'm just going to start out here and do these little, little feathered lines. In the direction the eyebrows flow. And I can always go darker. I can do more. There's also a little a little shadow under that eye, but you can see the eyelid. So I'm going to leave that a little space out under that eyelid and do a little shadow. So I'm just going to come under here and just hatch through that. Leaving a little bit of space there. And the last thing is a dot. If if it's not if it's darker on the edge, you can put little dots in between. But you don't want to be doing too much around that eye. And if you wanted to, right over the bridge of the nose, you can see that shadow that's in there. You can hatch through that and get that shape in. And we're going to hatch down the nose anyway, So, uh, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. Because we can always come back into it and add more. All right, here's the other eye. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start here, a little arch. Try to make it the same size. A couple little dots and dashes for the iris. Little Pac Man pupil. Starburst lines. A few little dots just to make those darker edges. Here's your eye lid. couple little dots in her eye itself because they're not white. Little shadow under the eye, just these little hatch lines. Remember to leave yourself space for your eyelid. Dots and dashes. I haven't done the eyelashes yet. Those are kind of the last things to do. There is a very light shadow right up the bridge of the nose there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit that too. Very, very lightly. Less line. Her eyebrow. Those feathered lines. And you can put in as much line as you feel like you need. I, I kind of darken those in. A 
And we can do more in there right now. I think that's enough. Now, if you're a coward like me, and you think, oh, I don't know about that nose, you know, you can come in, and with your pencil, you can kind of draw in that nose a little bit. Remember, if you go straight down from the tear duct, that's where the nostril goes. So straight down from the tear duct, straight down from the tear duct over here. There's your nostril. And with kids' noses, kids' noses are slightly closer to the eye than adult noses. And I'm just going to just ever so lightly throw in a nostril there, a little nostril here. When you do nostrils, you don't want to draw a line and then fill it in. The easiest way to do it is I think of like, do you guys know what a Nike swoosh is? Upside down Nike swooshes. So I'm going to do this little upside down Nike swoosh. And you can use little dots and dashes. So I start out with these little Nike swooshes, these upside down little arches. And then you're going to, with dots and dashes, go from the top of the Nike swoosh down. And that's the nostrils. And then, with very light edge, very light line, you may want to put in an edge over here. Dots and dashes. Don't connect those. You should always have a little space between the outside of the nostril and the inside of the nostril. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Just a couple little dots and dashes. Well, here, I'm just going to do dots. And then, that whole shadow that's under there. Remember, you have... Uh, reflected light up under the nostril. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go straight with my, my parallel line. And here is the core shadow. Little dots and dashes. And then I'm going to hatch through this entire shape right there. I'm going to go through everything to get that cast shadow that's right there. So I'm just going to hatch through that, through everything. Her little philtrum is kind of strong right there, so I'm going to go through that. And there's a little tiny bit on this side that curves in. Little dots and dashes there. Just enough. Now, lips might give you a little bit of a, a fret. So this is how you do lips and teeth. Remember how we do teeth where you don't draw so much teeth? Between the corner of the mouth, uh, they're, they're, it's much darker. So I'm going to come over, and if you go straight down from the inside of the eye, and just make a little mark there by the corner of the mouth. Straight down from the inside of the eye here, make a little mark. Make sure those marks are fairly parallel. That just tells me where the corner of the mouth is. And now I'm going to do those little triangle shapes. Little dots and dashes. Little triangle shapes. And the center of the tooth, if I come straight down off that septum, do a little triangle right there. Little triangle over here. The corner of the mouth. Then the rest of her lip is done with just hatched lines. If you want to, you can draw with your pencil the edge of the lip. Or you can just hatch through it. I'm just going to hatch through it. And then little dots and dashes to show where that is. The teeth, 
are not white. And so I may want to go in and do a couple little dots and dashes. Here's a little dot. Couple little dots down that tooth. Couple little dots on this tooth. Maybe a dot in between. And then again, we can darken this wherever we feel like we need to. So the corners of the mouth are always a little darker. I'm going to hatch through that. The bottom lip has a, has a shadow under it. So I'm just going to hatch through that. And on this side, just going to kind of a couple little dots and dashes. And I can darken that in. And I'm just going to use little, little lines to go down the lip. A little coarse shadow on the lip. Little dashes and dots. Whatever I think I need. The bottom lip is uh, the shadow under there is quite dark. So I'm going to hatch through there. And as far as faces go, that's about it. A little bit that we're going to do. I'm going to hatch through some of the shadow over here. You can put, if you... If you want to get where her cheeks go, you can do that too. But uh, just under the nose, if you come straight out, you can kind of do a little edge like that. Just say there's a cheek there. You can kind of see where that's going to start. But the curve of the jaw here, there's you really don't want to do too much there. So I'm going to add just a little dots and dashes. Here's the, her little uh, cleft chin. There's a darker shadow under the chin, and then it gets really light, so I'm going to just break it, leave it out, and add a few more in over here. A couple little dots and dashes. But this side of the chin, I'm just going to leave it out. So if I got rid of my graphite, I mean, that's about it. That's about all you need. We can add more if we need to. Like right here, we're going to add quite a bit. I'm going to do little dots and dashes to just show the curve of this chin. Maybe the neck just a little bit here. This side is very light, so I'm just going to leave it out. A couple little dashes there. You got it. Now, this, this side is in shadow. I'm going to do this hair first and then do this shadow. So I've got to figure out where the hair starts. So I'm going to do these little hatched lines away from the face. Just say there's, there's a little bit of hair there. I can see where it starts. Coming up into the forehead, right here is hair. And just like we did with our moose, a few little hairs that kind of flip up, flip down. When you're looking at human hair, it's just exactly like we did with the moose. You look at the darkest shapes and then throw those in. So darkest shapes, I'm just going to go in here and just throw in some of these dark shapes. I'm not worried about individual hairs. It's just the shape of the shadows that I see. And if, if my line goes the direction that the hair flows, it'll look like hair. And really, nobody really cares too much about the hair. 
And so just pick out the darkest areas. If there's a light area, you can leave it out. Little S curves. And whatever shape you see, you can just block it in and then you can scribble in some darkness. And it's the edges that are important. So all I need is to bring out little pieces off of that. And voila, you have hair. Don't worry so much about hair. Just shapes of dark and light. Okay, so there's some little light areas in there. You want to leave those out. All this light stuff leave out, but all the other stuff. Just draw little shapes of darkness in the direction that that hair looks like it flows, and you got it. And if there's a little bit, like there's some renegade hairs that kind of come out, you can kind of throw those in just ever so lightly. Here's one that kind of curls down. Try not to do a continual line. Let your hand kind of skip across the surface. Easier said than done. I know that this is this is a practice thing. Just skip, skip, skip. She's got an ear in there. It's very dark. I'm just going to throw that in with this. There's a rear. I don't know if you notice how I'm scribbling this. But once you get the direction that things are going, and you're picking out shapes, you just scribble through them. You just need them to go dark. And it'll end up looking like hair. It's your edges that are important. So the edge that comes in towards the head, and the edge that's, you know, on the outside. Everything else you can just kind of fudge through. This side of her head now, I'm ready to do that. If I got rid of all my graphite over there, and I'm ready for that shadow that comes down there, I can just hatch through it. So I'm just going to hatch through it. Very light, light, light line. Barely touching the surface. And I'm going to hatch through it going this way. Some needs to go a little darker than others. And you just keep hatching through it until it's as dark as you want it to go. Underneath her chin, it's quite dark there. There's a cast shadow there. Get that in there. So um, I'm ready to almost do the hand here. Um, I, there's a ton more that I need to do in the hair. I mean, that's, but I've got it blocked in. I can always come back into it later. 
if you're drawing from life, like say you're outside and this little bird comes by and you're drawing the little bird as he's pecking along, he's going to fly away pretty quick. So you got to get as much information as you can. When you're drawing from life, even if that person is modeling for you, it's hard to keep that position. So you draw as fast as you can, get as much information as you can. You can always come back into it and add more. But you want to get as much done as you can. So when you're doing fingers, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this hand. Look how much is left out. That fingertip is gone. So I can just throw in just a couple little dots and dashes. Here's the end of that finger. It's gone. The rest of it's gone. Here's the bottom part. Little dots and dashes. Whatever you think you see. And this other finger, it's it's pretty well gone. So a couple little dots and dashes. Here's the back of the hand. Two little dots and dashes. That that part of the finger is pretty well gone. I'm going to just put a little dot there, and then the tip of the finger. Yeah, just. Tip of the finger, a couple little dots and dashes. When in doubt, leave it out. If you, if you look at it and you think, oh, I'm not sure I want to draw that in there, don't do it. Leave it out. You can always come back in later. This other little part of the finger is gone too. You might want to just put a little dot or dash in there. Here's the end of it. It runs into the little finger. And it's over there. I'm going to do the bottom part of the little finger. And that's it. I think people don't like to draw hands. Because they feel like they have to draw every little knuckle and every little thing. You don't. That's probably plenty there. All right, she looks funny without the rest of her hair, so I'm going to go in and throw the rest of her hair in. And again, just get it as fast as you can. Another good way uh, to think about this, if we were to draw a line where the hair goes, we'd be stuck with that line. But this way, you can make the hair more or less. Because there's no definite edge. And you're just going to scribble in those little shapes anyway. I hope it kind of feels like uh, very therapeutic to you. This way of drawing can be very relaxing. I think y'all worry too much about it. Worry too much of what, maybe what I'm going to think of it. All I want you to do is your best. You get full credit for your best, whatever that is. If you quit, you don't get as much credit, but hey, that's the way life is.
any place you see uh, a shadow that you feel like it needs to be in there, don't be afraid to put that in there. I've got some shadow down here on her, her cheek. Just some very light edge. Going to do some cross hatching up through their her eye and on the bridge of the nose over there. Needs to go a little darker. I just scribbled through all that, that hair. And I can come back into it and I can make it look better. But for right now, that's probably okay. I've got all this fabric on here, but it's white. And so uh, there's no reason to draw a line around it. Just let the folds take care of the edges. So, for example, over here, um, I'm going to do her little her little jumper here as an edge. Let me throw that in. But the white part of the fabric just has these little little folds. So I'm just going to look at the shape of those shadows and with my pen. Just hatch through them, hatch through the shapes. And if you're a little concerned, you can take your pencil and you can come in a little bit. Not that big of a deal. So where, where the shadow is a little darker, just put in a few more hatch lines. Piece of cake. Fabric is so easy. Back of her arm is pretty dark. I'm just going to throw in some of these little dark shapes. By cross hatching. Just draw the dark shapes and leave the rest out. If later on you say, eh, I needed something there, you can always come back into it. Here's that other sleeve. I, I don't know where that edge is, but that's okay. 
I'm just going to leave it out. If, when you're all done, you think, eh, I need to show a little bit of that edge, you can come back into it and add a little dot or dash. But who cares where those folds are? They don't have to be in exactly the right spot. Just close. Whatever you can do. When you're doing the other hand, just do the shapes around it. Don't worry about the hand. Don't think of it as a hand. It's not a hand. Shapes of dark and light. Well, that was fun. I hope you all learned something. I hope you're all ready for your your own drawing. Drawing on your own. Good place for a signature is right there by her elbow. So when you get to that point. Oh, there's a ton of things that you can still do here. But we're out of time. I had such a good time drawing with you today. I'm glad that you came along and that you're willing to draw with me on this, this little thing that we call art. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Did something you've never done before. And hopefully, somewhere along there, your life gets better. Because art makes life better. Whether it's just doing the art, or the satisfaction of creating something, or it's just building up that hand-eye coordination, Whatever it is, whatever whatever you're doing this for, I hope it's made your life a little bit nicer. Because art makes life better. It just does.